Well, the question is on Iraq and just what we're seeing in the world today and the brutality that's really on a different level. It's, it's 14th century barbarism is what it is. And how do we process that through? I, I would say I do think political, theological, Christian, they're all one and the same right now. Um, I don't know that I separate them out that much. It's what's happening there is so visceral. The injustice is so visceral and compelling and wrong, deeply wrong, that politically it makes us respond a certain way. Uh, as a Christian, we're horrified. I think as human beings, we're gripped. And, and there's a part of us deep inside that says, this ought not be. Um, you know, there's a passage in Scripture that I thought I would never preach, that I, that I did preach the first year of Antioch. And it's a story in the book of Judges when a, a community that's just so debauched comes and calls for the men that are staying there, and they're going to they're gonna abuse them that night. And, and then the men send out the concubine, and the concubine gets abused all night, basically raped to death. There's no kids in here, are there? Um, and, and they come out the next morning, they find her dead, and they're so outraged. How could this be happening in the 12 tribes of Israel? The, then they do something really interesting. They cut her body up into 12 pieces, and they send the pieces to the different tribes of the nation of Israel. And, and it's basically a message. The 12 tribes get the message like, look at what is happening. Such things ought not happen. And so they all come together and they go to war. And they, they say, we cannot let this continue. So, I mean, there, there are times, even in Scripture, where the outrage just reaches this point where it's like, this cannot be. I was with my friend Jeremy Courtney in downtown Manhattan on the way to Times Square in a cab. And he answered his phone, not knowing it was some random person that had got his cell phone from who knows what, but had seen him on a cable news network. And it was an Iraq war veteran. Um, and so he answered the phone, and the guy said, I saw your thing. Uh, I want to help. Um, all I want to do is grab my gun and go over there and, and, and jump, jump in, like get involved. Um, that was his guttural response. And I think I sympathize with that response, you know, Let's just get over there and start fighting, which obviously would be political and, I, and, and in some ways is unsustainable, right? Um, so how do, we, how do we think that stuff through? Um, I think the first thing we have to do is lament. Um, it's okay to cry and cry and cry and cry. It's okay to let it wash over us and break us um, and to stand in solidarity, to let it ruin our day. Um, because if I was over in Iraq right now and I was losing family members and losing my property um, and being chased from my homeland, I would, I would like to think that there's somebody on the other side of the world that was being broken over it, right? Um, so do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. I, I want to be broken and feel like there's some solidarity there. I think the hard thing with this Iraq question right now is there's very few next steps for people that are used to next steps. Americans are very type A, we, we like to act. So when we feel it, we wanna, we wanna then act on it. And there's very little right now that people can do to, to affect the situation directly. Um, so that's hard. And. Uh, and so I think we watch from a distance and we try and understand how is this going to change the world in which we live. It's going to, I believe, it's, it, we're, we're literally watching at one of those turning points in history. Um, I mean, the map from Ukraine and Russia down to Iraq and Syria to immigration crises and what's going on with, with gangs and the murder that's happening in Central America. I mean, the murder capital of the world is, is Honduras. 
three times the murder rate of Mexico. I mean, it's just mind-blowing. Um, and I think we're living in one of those times when, when we'll be, it's like the 60s. We're going to be looking back one day and going, this was, this was one of those points that shaped the world. And I don't know how I feel about that because I don't like change. I don't like change. So there's some selfish things that creep in about like, oh, this makes me feel scared. I don't know what to do. But I, I do feel like we need to sit in it and lament it and grieve it and learn how to pray for those people um, and not just think that there's some way we can fix it. And, and teach people about it. I don't know that our kids should be so sheltered as they are. I mean, there's age-appropriate things, and I think every parent has to decide that. At what, you know, what can they handle at this age? But I don't know that raising my kids uh, in a bubble just so that it can be burst later is, is the right thing. I think, I think some of this should, should be a part of their upbringing, um, that the world's not utopia. But I don't have a final answer for that other than I'm, I'm right there with you. I think everyone in America, given the last 10 to 15 years with Iraq, has some kind of emotional connection to what's going on there, um, some kind of reaction. Uh, and I affirm that. I mean, I affirm your emotion.